Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Craftsman has just come out with their first brushless high torque impact wrench, and you guys wanted to see it, so we bought it. This is their CMC F940, the M1 kit here with the battery and charger, which goes for a very decent $229 retail before any sales that might exist in the future. This canvas bag, it's not bad either. This model carries their new RP badging, which I believe to basically mean their brushless tools. Some of their models that were already brushless are simply getting a new badge, like what happened with Gen 5X tools when they switched over to Octane under Rigid. Though the keen-eyed among you will probably already know what we're pointing out here, and that is that its size and looks-wise is a lot like the DeWalt High Torque right here. Oh, and this is this is actually DeWalt's newest, beefier but pricier tool, DCF 900 model. Keep getting those two confused. Here's DeWalt's long-standing DCF 899, which compares even closer to this new Craftsman introduction. And we are talking mirror-like here, same number of vent holes at the battery now, same length or at least within 1 16th of an inch, same width, toggle speed selectors, motor ventilation holes, hardware holes, practically everything on the outside besides just the batteries themselves interchanging matches up. And no, they don't fit, though you can get this one about 90% of the way on to the Craftsman. Even their weights are within six thousandths of a pound, so two to three grams. And yet, if that info alone cements these as the same, we're basically just doing the same amount of digging the average consumer does, who knows that these are both made by Stanley Black & Decker. So we're gonna dyno this new intro versus its brother from the same mother, then open them both up to compare parts and design. Now, if you were to ask Stanley, these two models very much are different to the shortcoming of the Craftsman, while both are rated 700 tightening, the Craftsman is rated 1,000 foot-pounds bolt breakaway, versus the 899 Classic's 1,200 foot-pounds from a six-year-older model. You'd have to forgive us for not taking their word for it, though, as we've uncovered in the past the DCF 894, the smaller mid-torque from DeWalt. Its performance can be found manifested in red at a higher price point under the Mac Tools brand, and also in red but at a lower price point than DeWalt, and carrying lower specs with it in the Craftsman, which is now in their RP line of V20 tools. That Craftsman mid-torque we found to be basically the same. The new $229 kit costs around $10 less than we paid originally for the DCF-899 as a bare tool from DeWalt, so even if they turned out to simply be the same tool, that would be some watering down of the specs to protect that pricier brand name, me thinks. Let's find out. Our first test is 5 seconds of working torque, or tightening and forward, which means these two tools per their specs should be about the same. Here's the Craftsman taking on the DeWalt DCF-899. Four seventy eight over four fifty three with the craftsman on top. Sounds like it could be a fluke, but these results we show you are median runs as usual, and the craftsman did have a run as high as five hundred and four, which the eight ninety nine in our many times of testing it has never approached. Being basically a dewalt ish SBD impact, though, our results with these tools aren't as back to back consistent as with other brands. Nothing's changed there for us. Let's check things out in reverse where DeWalt is said to have a 20% advantage by the numbers. Here's our 10 second max torque test with that yellow tool. $546 from the DeWalt and here's the new Craftsman. Five hundred and seventy. Okay, not miles up, but certainly up, not down, like the twenty percent difference were being advertised. One thing we noticed with this tool is its trigger is fairly delayed in its release or break, even more so than the Dewalt, which isn't already the best ever. You let go, and it will both spin and impact a bit further. So in our testing, we need to either let out a half second earlier or pull the impact off the rig at the buzzer. It's a little annoying, and if this thing is in top mode, I could see how an intended two Uggadugas could be accidentally four, so be careful with those lug nuts. So far, this Craftsman is having no trouble keeping up, and, well, scratch that, besting the DeWalt 899. In our last test with the DeWalt up first, we have some context we're gonna show you versus the new DCF 900, that beast, with the same five amp hour battery in this reverse direction against the 899. 
in case you're still somehow under the impression that Craftsman is just stunting on the best from DeWalt. So yeah, basically 8.30 over 6.30, and that DCF 900 would go on to pile on even extra in forward, which the 899 never managed. So basically, with just keeping that in mind, let's see the new Craftsman RP versus that 899. Seventy over 629, quite a gap now, actually, and this is made even more impressive considering Craftsman batteries of this size range are 4 amp hour packs versus DeWalt's 5 amp hour, which normally in itself does not mean a whole lot given the number of cells inside are the same, but we did find in past testing that a DeWalt 4 amp hour battery did deliver less than a 5 amp hour one. Impact wrench wise, we normally see a gain at just the end with hammer size difference where things are much tighter or just at the beginning where impacts per minute differences show up. Here we're seeing both, which is curious for a tool that's a spitting image of its older brother. We did our normal battery of testing as usual and everything seemed to back this up or at least as much as the results you've been shown on screen thus far. We felt after seeing this and scratching our heads a bit that opening these two tools up would probably be the best thing for it. Exact same process for each, even the same size and length of bolts used for both tools. When you have them both open, you'll notice that the layout internal injection molding design and overall design and placement of electronics is exact. But interestingly, many of the parts, like the actual electrical components, are different. These capacitors here, a larger wire gauge here despite both tools being the same voltage. The trigger is a new part number and a worse trigger for it in our opinion, though that could be some programming on the board as well. The meat and potatoes of it all is here with the brushless motor and impact mechanism, which again look very similar or the same, but let's take a closer look at both. The motor is different, different cutouts here on the openings. The windings go from not at all to at least partially epoxied in place, and now soldered plus epoxied terminals too. This later model motor is also good for an extra 100 RPM, and apparently 200 more impacts per minute. The planetary housings here appear the same, it's interchangeable. Besides the LED type being from SMD on the DeWalt to a cheaper bulb style on the Craftsman, everything down here from the switches to the board is pretty much the same. On the hammer cages, the planetary gear pins are captured on the top and bottom, like on most larger impact wrenches. We like to see that, see the H96B Milwaukee revision for more on why there. But this DeWalt hammer assembly has a T3 stamped into it, and also a TY1 on the hammer face with these reliefs cut out at the hammers. The Craftsman is missing those reliefs, no markings on the hammer face either, and interestingly it has T2 stamped onto it rather than T3 despite being a much later introduced model. The DeWalt's hammer assembly weighs around 1.8 plus pounds, while the Craftsman is more like 1.9 pounds, a bigger difference than we saw between the entire tool weights on these two examples. Normally with a heavier hammer assembly, even slightly so, you see less RPM and IPM, but the motor on this Craftsman is not only able to handle slightly more mass, but drive that mass quicker than the DeWalt. And we've seen the effects more mass has as the new rigid high torque hammer mechanism weighs less than the Milwaukee H96A version high torque, and yet with more RPM it was able to deliver about the same torque as we found. And so by swapping the bigger hammer assembly from the Milwaukee into the higher RPM rigid, we saw a compound effect type thing happening with this new creation making more than either examples. Which is what rigid would have offered if I assume they were allowed to one up the Milwaukee. And you can do the same here, you can swap the Craftsman mechanism into the DeWalt, not sure why you would though as the Craftsman is cheaper to buy. And funny enough you can even swap over the hammer casings, the DeWalt looking I think even a bit better here now. So I feel TTI and Stanley are sort of doing the same thing here. TTI gave Rigid a smaller hammer despite it being able to drive a Milwaukee sized one, so it could be advertised at a lower spec and a lower price point. 
Stanley did the same with the Craftsman in that spec and price point. They just sort of forgot to downgrade the internals here. And I think that's a big win for you V20 owners. Let's see just how big of one on our ranking. Obviously starting beside the DeWalt 899 here, the new RP's high torque runs are turned into points as 48, 57, and 68. It's the same 8.8 .8 or like 8.77 inches long, but made more for us than the 899, and that's 76.1 foot-pounds per inch of length that it takes up. They both advertise the same tightening torque despite the bolt breakaway difference. That's 96% for the new model, now getting closer to it. DeWalt's usually pretty good in these types of ratings here, though not sure how a faster hitting, higher mass hammer is supposed to have a lower breakaway than this one up here, but moving on. This new model is currently still only sold as a kit, so gets an asterisk here, and one of our standard battery plus charger discounts until the bear tool pricing is available. But $169 makes it one of the most affordable high torques on the list, that's a big 59.5 points here, a lot of value in this one. And that totals 404.6, bumping this up below the Ryobi High Torque, which has a very similar performance, but is lighter, sort of easier to fit design, but for more cash too. So in context, it doesn't make the most power in the world, but it makes more than the long-standing DeWalt favorite, the 899. So this torque rating downgrade they gave it really makes no sense and sort of bothers me too. It's the reason I made this channel, brands filling in these specs with their creative writing caps on. Specs of tools should have nothing to do with brand image or brand protection or price point. Specs are specs. And in case you're holding on to your precious 899 here and feel a tear forming, keep in mind DeWalt has a massive array of beastly batteries like this 9 amp hour flex volt with 21700 size cells inside that we got with our 60 volt blower that we tested and the older 899 benefits, it seems, a lot from these beefcake batteries. Not that this is a rule you can apply to all tools. And as shown here, it's surpassing the 670 of the Craftsman quite well. While Craftsman has a 9 amp hour battery that may just kind of close this gap, it's traditional 18650 cells inside, so DeWalt's range of offerings still brings a lot to the table. Appreciate you joining us for this one. It's our aim to bring more cut and dry, repeatable numbers to the world of power tool specs. You can catch our attempts at this at least every Friday and some bonus days like today by clicking subscribe. Thanks for watching.